Good day everyone, this is Jason Santos and for today we're going to continue teaching and studying statistics and probability. This is for chapter 1 and the second part of the entire chapter. So let's get started. Please take note that all of the materials used in the entire video were based from the most essential learning competencies matrix given by the Department of Education or DEP. In continuation of what we have discussed last time, we will now be covering data and variables. So, data can be descriptive like high or fast or in numerical form or numerical numbers. And numerical data can be discrete or continuous. When you say discrete, the data can be counted, while continuous means the data can be measured. A variable is any characteristics, number, or quantity that can be measured or counted. Variable may also be called a data item. It is called a variable because the value may vary. Now, from the root word itself, vary means there could be any changes or difference in the set of variables between the data units in a population and may change in value over time. Now, please take note that when you are studying statistics, data is a for, foremost important um, topic that should be covered. Now, now when we talk of a uh, discrete and continuous variable, both of those are under the category random. So when you say random, it is usually written as x, a variable whose possible values are numerical outcomes of a random phenomenon. When you say random, it means anything. There's no specific order or pattern. There are two types of random variables. It can be discrete random variables and continuous random variables. A discrete random variable is one which may take on only a countable number or distinct values, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Discrete random variables are usually but not necessarily counted. So for example, we have here a number of children in a family. So since it is mentioned that discrete variables can be counted, we can say that the number of children in the family, particularly in the Philippines, averages between 3 and 4. We cannot say 3 and a half, 4 and a half, 5 and a half, and so forth. Both or all of those numbers must be a specific discrete number, numbers that can be counted. In the same manner, the Friday night attendance in a cinema, let's say a movie is uh, shown in a particular cinema, you can count the number of attendees here therein. You cannot say um, the attendance was 24 and a half or 50 and a half. It has to be a specific discrete number. The number of patients a doctor sees in one jury. So um, with this one, particularly in the times of pandemic, we can see an increased number of patients, but definitely it must be counted or it must be specific. The number of these um, defective light bulbs in the box of them. So the box, the total quantity in the box has already been defined, which is 10. But the number of defectives therein must also be very specific. We can see. Last but not the least, the example is the number of heads flipped in three trials. Let's say um, you are in a court and there are a specific number of lawyers or maybe um, witnesses who have flipped uh, during the trial. So all of those things depend on head count. And um, as we have mentioned, discrete variables must be counted. Next, we go to continuous random variable. So when you say a continuous random variable, it is the one that takes an infinite number of possible values. A continuous random value, uh, variable are usually measurements. Take, for an instance, we have height, weight, 
the amount of sugar in an orange, the time required to run a mile. So for example, when it comes to height, we all know that there are averages. Like for example, for Filipinos, the average height would be 5'5 five five to 5'7 five for males. And that depends, um, or that would be varying if you are in the United States, wherein the average height would be around 5'11 to 6 foot up. Now, uh, in our example picture here, we can see uh, the most, uh, the fattest man alive at a specific year. Um, I believe this picture was taken from uh, the wax museum. And then right beside him is a picture of the thinnest man. So when you talk of weight, there must be averages, ideal weights, so on and so forth. But as mentioned, when you talk of continuous random variable, it takes infinite number of possible values. When you talk of two people who have the same kilo, seemingly like they are both 70 kilos, it does not mean that they are very specifically um, similar when it comes to weight. Because we can still drill down as to um, how many, uh, we can still uh, drill down to let's say milligrams, grams, so on and so forth, the further denomination of weight, right? Same goes for height. We can say both of them are 5'5", five five, but we can drill it down to specific number of centimeters, millimeters, so on and so forth. And they would be varying. The amount of sugar in an orange is also an example of a continuous random variable because there is no specific number of um, milligrams of sugar in an orange. Every orange will vary. And then the time required to run a mile is another example of a continuous random variable because it talks of time and distance. So when we, when we say time, uh, we can have different, um, we will be able to finish the marathon or sprint at different times because we run at different paces. So all of those things um, pertain to continuous random variable. When we hear examples of height, weight, amount, and then time, and then distance, it is almost automatically that the given is an example of a continuous random variable. Let's, now let's try to apply what we have learned so far from the discussion and uh, try to answer this activity. You can pause this video for a while so you can try to answer it on your own and then get back later once you have tried answering it. If you're done answering it, let's go ahead and proceed to the uh, answer pages. So here are the answers to the questions that we had earlier. Catherine sold 15 cars in one month is an example of a discrete variable because it talks of a specific number, 15. A regular motorcycle can run between 100 to 150 kilometers per hour. It is continuous because it talks of a distance. Senior high school are typically, senior high school uh, classes are typically one hour each. Um, this is a little bit of a trick question. The answer is continuous. We may say why because we're asked why because it is already given that it is for an hour each but remember according to the rule and what we have discussed earlier when you talk of time it pertains almost automatically to continuous so what we are saying here is that it is typical meaning it's not absolute it may run for an hour, an hour and a minute, an hour and 30 minutes. It will vary. But that is the prescribed time, which is one hour. Number four, Jason counted the number of students who were not yet fully registered last semester. Of course, it will be discrete because it pertains to headcount. We have to count the number of people who have not yet registered. Five, there is an increase in number of applicants who have applied for vacant position in our company is discrete 
also head count. She weighs 50 kilos. This pertains to weight, so this is continuous. I have flipped the coin four times in a row is discrete because you have to count it. Mark's height is 6 foot 1. This is continuous because it refers to height. The number of typographical errors in a rough draft of a book is discrete because you would have to count the number of errors regardless of the nature and length of the error. The amount of water in a 12 ounce bottle is continuous because it pertains to volume weight. So, I hope you have understand and now learn how to um, un how to differentiate di between discrete and continuous. Finally, let's round it all up. What is the importance of knowing the difference between discrete and random variables? It helps in measuring variations in performance of products, employees, business units, etc. So, sooner or later, senior high school students will become managers of their own and handling businesses. So, being able to understand the difference between the two types of data would help them utilize it to their advantage. It allows comparison of two or more products, helps in identifying relationship between various variables, and their effect on each other like effect of advertisement and sales. Another is that the role of statistics in business is informing a manager working on employee performance management. A uh, manager collects data about employee productivity. As an example, uh, you can use the difference between those data to understand the nature of the data you have collected. And then finally, it can be used for analysis and decision making. Let us all remember that um, learning the significance of statistics would aid the decision maker, the manager, or the owner of the business. That's it for today. I hope you have learned something from the discussions we've made. Um, if there's anything that you would like to ask or suggestions, comments, and feedbacks, please feel free to um, put it down below in the comment, uh, comment section or you can send me a message at Facebook. Um, I will be putting my uh, Facebook this, uh, link down below so you can uh, connect with me. And then thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. God bless. Thank you so much.